I am Dr. Mike Van Thielen with Biohacking Unlimited and today we will talk about EMF or electromagnetic frequencies. Now electromagnetic frequencies can be natural or man-made. Natural frequencies are for example the sunlight, we have EMF with lightning and then we have a lot of man-made EMFs uh, of course from our appliances, our electricity, our electrical wiring, uh, we uh, generate EMS with our cell phones, smart devices, Wi-Fi routers, microwave ovens, and the list goes on. Now, the man-made EMFs are proven to be very harmful to our body. Now, let's look a little bit closer at ionizing versus non-ionizing radiation, because everybody probably remembers the picture we had to look at about the electromagnetic spectrum. And at the far end, we have our X-rays and gamma rays, which have a very high frequency. And the reason why they're called ionizing is because they are so strong, they potentially could split an atom and damage the DNA uh, of that cell. Uh, luckily, we're not often exposed to these kind of uh, rays, like X-rays and gamma rays. On the other end of the electromagnetic spectrum, we have the non-ionizing radiation, such as radio waves, TV waves, uh, that's where the microwaves are, uh, the frequencies of our appliances, cell phones, routers, Bluetooth, that's all non-ionizing radiation. Now, it was wrongly assumed for decades that this non-ionizing radiation is not harmful to the body. But plenty of recent research shows on how damaging this non-ionizing radiation really is, mostly because it's accumulative, because we're exposed to almost 24 hours a day, okay? Now, this non-ionizing radiation is not strong enough to directly split an atom and cause DNA damage, but it does it a different way. In short, the non-ionizing radiation basically dilates the calcium channels that are responsible for a delicate balance between intracellular and extracellular calcium. And when those channels open up, we have an influx of calcium in the cell. Now, that influx or excess calcium in the cell causes the promotion or stimulation, stimulation of superoxide. Superoxide combines with nitric oxide, nitric oxide, which we all heard about, and it forms a, perox a peroxynitrite. And peroxynitrite releases carbonyl free radicals. Now these carbonyl free radicals are inside the cell and they cause damage to the mitochondria and the DNA. And so that's how now research has shown that non-ionizing radiation from all our appliances, cell phones, Wi-Fi routers, Bluetooth causes serious bubbly damage, biological and physiological damage. So, what do we need to do? First of all, we need to mitigate the exposure from those sources, especially inside the house and your office. We need to identify where the magnetic fields are, where the electrical fields are, where they come from. We can do that with meters or we can have a professional come into the home. Then we need to mitigate those sources. If there's dirty electricity, we can buy filters. With our phone, for example, there's many, many, many tips in my book that you can apply to really mitigate the radiation coming from cell phones. Uh, for example, the further the cell phone away from you, the less radiation. It's simply the inverse square uh, law of Newton. Uh, so put it on speakerphone when you can. Put it a few feet, at least three feet away from you. When you don't use your iPhone, put it on airplane mode. Turn Bluetooth off because even if you're not using it, signals are being received constantly and the radiation is there. Uh, don't go to sleep with it. Don't charge it on the nightstand or in bed. Put it away from you. Uh, when you have low reception or poor reception, just like one or two bars, don't call if you don't have to, because there will be a thousand times more radiation when there's uh, poor uh, reception. Uh, when you're moving, when you're on the go, or when you're driving, try not to make a call. When you're moving, the radiation is much higher than when you are in a static position, uh, obviously because the cell towers, uh, when you're moving, have to continue to send signals to locate you. So many, many, many uh, ways to limit the exposure of radiation from your smart devices. Uh, when you're inside the home, computers, laptops, plug them in, ground them, plug them in, don't use your uh, wireless. 
Uh, when it comes to your router, make sure you place it in a spot in the house where nobody is close, not in a common area. You can uh, purchase a Faraday bag to put the router in to uh, limit the uh, radiation coming from the router. And then we can talk about appliances and microwave ovens and many other things that we can do inside the house to lower the exposure to EMF and EMR. Besides that, we can shield ourselves. We can shield our own body from the radiation. For example, personally, I've been sleeping almost three years on a anti-aging bed cover. It's a cover that I bought, goes over the mattress, and it is threaded uh, with lots of uh, nanotechnology silver. And so when you lay on it, or when you contact your body with this cover, it shields all EMF. And no, it's not a hoax because you can measure it with an EMF meter. So you can measure the radiation on your body. And then as soon as you lay on the cover or you get in contact with the cover, the radiation is no longer there. There's also all kinds of fabric that you can put in your uh, recliner, in your office chair, under your laptop, uh, you know, even in your pet's bed to protect your pets, etc. So there's fabric and protective clothing available also. And so my book, EMR, EMR, Electromagnetic Radiation, The Invisible Thread, really is a practical guide for all the things that you can do to limit the exposure to EMR and EMF and also shield yourself from it. But we cannot limit all of it, for sure not. So there still will be some DNA damage done to your body. The book goes also into how to repair the DNA damage that is done. And that is quite some biohacking right there because most people don't know, but we actually have an innate, an innate uh, a repair system, a system in our body that automatically repairs damaged DNA. It's called the ARTD1 repair system. Now, important is to know that most people don't have the fuel for that repair system to work because the fuel for our repair system is NAD+. You probably heard about NAD+. So yes, we need to make sure we have enough NAD+, fuel in our body to make sure our body can repair our damaged DNA. So we can get a high quality supplement of NAD+, we can get some infusions of NAD+, but beyond those, there's many other things we can do to make sure our NAD plus levels are high. For example, niacin is a precursor to NAD plus, also tryptophan, um, <coughs> certain types of exercise, uh, not eating late in the evening and making sure you don't, uh, you know, uh, take reserves of NAD plus uh, for digestive issues. And so there's many, many things that we can implement to make sure we have high levels of NAD plus, which fuels our DNA repair system. On the other hand, we also have to take lots of antioxidants to what? To neutralize those free radicals because antioxidants donate a, uh, an electron to the free radicals to make them stable again. But once an, exa, an, an antioxidant, excuse me, once an antioxidant fulfilled that function, it can't do anything anymore. Unless you have enough NADPH in your body. NADPH is the battery of our body. It's not the mitochondria. The mitochondria are the energy factories that produce energy or ATP. The NADPH is the battery of our body. It's like an electron reservoir. So we have enough, if we have enough electrons in our reservoir, then we can give one to the antioxidants when they just gave one to the free radicals. So we're gonna to continue to feed electrons to that same antioxidant so it can continue to neutralize free radicals. Wouldn't that be awesome? So in order to do that, we need to get our NADPH levels up. Uh, we can do that with uh, certain things that we eat and don't eat, but we also can do that with molecular hydrogen, get tablets, put them in your water, uh, C60, magnesium is very important to keep our NADP levels up, etc. So, in my book, there's many strategies to keep your NAD plus and NADPH levels up so our innate repair system can do its job and repair your DNA. So hopefully uh, this was a video with some useful information, but don't forget to download my ebook or purchase a paper book and hard cover 
on Amazon.com or on my own website, biohackingunlimited.com. It is loaded with practical information so you can mitigate the damaging effects of EMR and repair your DMA so you can stay or become superhuman. Thank you.